I was diagnosed at 65. 37, earlier than most. Every nine minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And every one of them can turn to the American Parkinson Disease Association. Visit APDAparkinson.org to learn more and show your support today. My name is Abdullah. I'm a Palestinian Muslim American. Um, today, I stand before you to shed light on the strength and resilience of the Palestinian men. Men, men who watch their whole families be bombed in front of them. Men who pick their children up from outside of the rubble. Men picking up babies. <clears throat> One cannot begin to comprehend the anguish and heartbreak the Palestinian men experience as they witness their families being killed. That's right. In their homes, which they have worked tirelessly to build, being demolished by bombs. The emotional toll of such atrocities is <clears throat> immeasurable, leaving scars that may never fully heal. That's right. <clears throat> it is deeply disheartening that Palestinian men who are heroes in their own right are often portrayed as terrorists Shame. in the eyes of Western media. Shame. I am portrayed as a terrorist to Western media. Shame. As a Palestinian man, I can only imagine the dehumanization I would face if I were to enter Palestine, my homeland. Shame. Despite the immense challenges they face in Palestine, men continue to embody strength resilience, and hope. They rise above the adversities they encounter, driven by their love for their families, their communities, and for their homeland. It is this very strength that fuels the determination to fight for justice, equality, and for peace. That's right. Yes, yes. It is our collective responsibility to change the narratives that dehumanize the demonized Palestinian men. We must recognize their, he their heroism, their sacrifices, and their unwavering spirit. <laughs> By doing so, we contribute to more, to a more just and compassionate world where every individual is seen for who they truly are. That's right! Yes. <laughs> and to conclude this all, let us remember the strength of Palestinian men who endure unimaginable hardships with unwavering determination. Let us stand together in solidarity, advocating for justice and inequality for all. Inequality for all. Mm -hmm. Together, we can rewrite the narrative and create a world where heroism is celebrated. Right. And the dignity of every human being, being is upheld. Like our Palestinian brothers, let us keep our heads high and keep fighting for their justice. And let, let us be the voice for the ones who cannot be heard. Yes. Oh, great. 
Group, which is over 255 people, in person to invite them to today's rally. Of my next poem, 
But here I will mention a specific one. Perhaps the killing of little Hind Rajab will convince the world that Zionist terror must end. If Emmett Till's murder inspired a movement, the, just wait until you hear about this killing. The sorrowful story of sweet six-year-old Hind Rajab is shocking, disturbing, and chilling. She was in a car with her four cousins escaping falling bombs when the Israelis started shelling. Gunfire, gunfire erupted. All her relatives were killed, and she was left alone on the phone crying. The Red Crescent recorded her family's last moments as the, as the Israelis murdered them each. The panic and terror are crystal clear as the gunshot silenced her cousin's last screams. Injured Hind was left alive to beg for help. She spent hours expressing her pain and fears. I'm afraid they are shooting us. Please come save me, she wailed as the Israeli soldiers neared. The Red Crescent alerted the Israeli army about the location of this little girl who survived with hopes that those monsters would have the heart to care and help her to reunite. With their parents and siblings, they were worried to death. They didn't want their daughter to die. Two ambulance drivers rushed to rescue little Hind. Allah blessed them with the courage to try. For once, mainstream media across the world united to express their sincere condemnation. Twelve days ticked by and her family waited with heart-wrenching prayers and frustration. At last, the bombing stopped and her family went to search. They found a scene of complete devastation. Both the car and the ambulance were unrecognizable, burned and bombed beyond any recognition. The final hours of Little Hind, the whole world listened in. It is a lesson in our humanity. To go on with our lives and ignore Palestine's cries would be nothing short of insanity. We must save our grief for later. There's no time to cry. How many more hymns will there be? Why can't the world's leaders open their eyes and put an end to Zionist brutality? The KKK claimed that they were all pious Christians and that God made the white race dominant. They undermined the intelligence of darker skinned people and demanded that they be subservient. They misquoted verses from the Holy Bible to justify treating them like maids and servants. They falsely claimed that to be a Bible thumping Christian, you must accept that prejudice is inherent. Zionism is no different, just the script is flipped. They believe they have a holy God-given right to murder and arrest, bomb and harass, to kick the Palestinians out and commit genocide. Why is it so easy to condemn the KKK when they tar and feather an old man who is not white? Yet world leaders donate millions to Zionist tyrants and blame the 30,000 victims who have died. So now do you see, how could you not agree that the Zionists are just the KKK on steroids? Make-believe news during Fox interviews and mainstream media manipulation is just a ploy. After 75 years of aggression and occupation, their only goal left is to completely destroy. They must flatten and conquer, wipe out the Sea of Amalek, kill every non-Jewish girl and boy. Zionism is the opposite of the values held dear by the founding fathers of the United States. We may not have achieved all our goals at this time, but we are striving to get to a place where every American has equal opportunity, regardless of religion, nationality, or race. Anyone who claims that Israel is a democracy with liberty and human rights, I say that is a disgrace. If everyone on earth followed the laws of our religion, we would, their religion, we would not be embroiled in genocide. We would have understanding and harmony, cooperation and empathy, Hate would be put to the side. Why waste money on war when we should feed the poor? Hungry children should not be denied. Let's find a solution, work together towards peace, and let our true religion serve as our guide, inshallah.
<laughs> you guys don't listen to me? No, I'm just kidding. So, as we, we didn't expect this to go on for so long, did we? We didn't expect that people could be so evil as to slaughter people for five whole months, but I guess that's what's happening. So, why is there boycott fatigue? Why am I seeing Starbucks cups? Why am I seeing Zara? everyone here attending. First of all, I want to thank everyone here for coming in this cold weather, for coming and standing up for the justice without any mind of race or religion or anything else. Yes. To be a human, to be a human, you should not follow anything. You can follow your heart. Yep, right. This heart that God created for you will tell you the truth. That's right. I came from a city, it's called Nablus. I was born 30 years ago in a Christian hospital. In my city, we have Christians, we have Muslims, we have Jewish. That we live long time together until now, until those days. We don't know who is a Jewish, who is a Muslim, who is a Christian, we live together in a natural city, natural country, all together. That's right! In that city, now like you will say like why he's speaking about that, because like you listen at the media, you see everyone thinking that those Muslims want to get rid of the Jewish. This is not real. We live together since long time ago. And when you hear the chant, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. This is not getting rid of the Jewish or the Christians or the Muslims or the atheists or anybody else. It's yeah. getting rid from the oppressors. Yeah. Yeah. Those oppressors who came to the country of the natives. That's right. And I don't like to use the words of the natives because every country have its own people. They came to us seeking help from the naziest Hitler. That's right. That he was killing them, genociding them, ethnic cleansing them, and we supported them until they start killing us, until they start taking the country, until they start taking the land. As they say, it's mentioned in my book. Everyone have a book. In every book, in our book, for example, it's mentioned all the lands, it's ours. Can we come outside and take and say, oh, your home is mine? No. 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 no! Every land, every home have its owner. And Palestine, it's for its owners. It's for its natives. Because they are the Palestinians. <laughs> Second point I want to say is, always we are seeing outside ceasefire now. I'm not with ceasefire. No. You will say ceasefire when you have two adults fighting, you will tell them to stop. But you when having one ba one adult beating a baby, you will tell the adult to stop. Yes. So that's what we will say. Stop genocide. Stop ethnic cleansing. Stop killing children. More than 10,000 children, they are dead until now. It's a big shame. It's a big shame. And who do this? Are terrorists. Who they want to ethnic cleansing those people. This is the first thing. Second thing as Sister Reem spoke, there is no gray area. If I am walking on a side, on this side, and I saw a baby going to the street, and there is a car will come to hit it, you will take him away from the car, or you will not do anything. That's right. You have just two options, to stand up for the babies, to stand up for the children, 
you have to keep silent. Yep. Because if you don't want to keep silent, if you want to support genocide, this is the second thing that I want everyone to go and search about it. If you want to support genocide, if you want to support killing the Gazan people, the Semite people of Gaza, Gaza people and Palestinians are Semite, as the Jewish, as the Assyrian, as all others that they are using the Semitic language. Don't use hypocrisy. This is the second thing. The third thing that I want to speak about is the hypocrisy that we have it in everywhere all around it. If we see a black baby dying, we will not speak about it. But if we see with all respect a blonde baby with eyes in Ukraine or wherever is that, we will start speaking about it. We will start supporting those kind of people. But when it's come to Palestinians, to people not from our colors, to people that they are not from our religion, I don't see them. No one see them. I start supporting them. That hypocrisy will not just affect the outsider, it will affect the insider. Before a few days when they passed a 95 billion aid for Ukraine and Taiwan and Israel, I think you forget the people, the people of this land. A lot of people, they need money. Why you did not relieve the student debt? Why you did not, you know, like 95 billion can get rid of the homeless problems. We can build a lot of houses for those homeless people. You can do a lot of things. If you are sick, you should try first to help yourself, then you will go outside to help others. This is the third thing. And the last thing that I will speak about it is, sorry, I took a lot of your time, but let's remember the brothers and sisters at Gaza that they are fully covered, that they are in a destroyed area, that they don't have food, they don't have shelters, they don't have anything, and it's blocked from the north and from the south. The last thing that I will speak about it is rising of the phoenixes. The phoenix is a bird that it's a myth. A lot of you know it, that it's a myth. But listen, guess what? We saw the phoenixes. We saw it at Gaza. Those children that they are coming from the ashes between the destroyed houses, destroyed hospitals, destroyed schools, destroyed churches, destroyed masjid. They are the phoenixes. They are the real phoenixes that they are rising from the ashes. And they will rise and they will build again the country. As always, they will rebuild it again. In all hands, Muslims, Christians, Jewish, even without the religions, they will build the country because it's Palestine and it will stay always Palestine. Thank you very much for coming. And I would like to give a big thanks for our sisters here. The sisters that they are re leading this movement. The sisters that they are those sisters, they are leading this movement, not just here. Even in Islam, the most precious thing that we have are those sisters. They are the basic of Islam. They give us a bath, they give us kids, they raise, up. they raise us up. And those Palestinians that they are, you are seeing them, with all those patients, with all standing up, they were raised with a Palestinian mother. Thank you very much, everyone.
we can't end this without saying what we're going to do next. We need you all to make your three phone calls every day. <laughs> Promise me, if each one of you makes your three calls, I know we are going to lead the way with 2,000 calls every day. <laughs> Free free Palestine!